Hello, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. Thank you to all those people who joined my Facebook group. And here's a little look at what one of the members produced from last week's lesson. Last week's lesson was on swirls. And this is Emily Seuss's contribution. Emily has her own YouTube channel. And if you head over there, you'll be able to watch her adding the watercolour pencil to this actual tile. I'll provide a link below this video. I'm going in the complete opposite direction this week. I'm staying away from organic tangles and going completely geometric. I'm also adding some very bold colours. I just purchased some Copic markers. I already had three grey ones, but I didn't have any colours, so I chose the Sketch Primary Colour Pack because there's two shades of each of the primary colours. You can see that these markers will bleed through to the other side of most papers. So just keep that in mind before you choose what paper you use. Using a counter or any small circular object, make two semicircles each touching. Turn the tile and where they intersect, draw another two semicircles. This tangle is called Caps by Sue Bailey. I'm just going to make some triangles all meeting in the centre of this semicircle. Do the same thing on each of the semicircles. Now I'll trace around the pencil lines with ink. I've cut a triangular shape out of a piece of card and I'll just place that on the corner and trace around it and then place it again and this time not go all the way around it just from the line I made of the triangle below it as if it's sitting behind the first triangle. I'm going to place that triangle back on the one I've already drawn to create an echo line. Do the same again with the other triangle. Now I'm using a bijou tile or you could just cut a piece of square card out to trace around and place that over the middle and you can see now as I'm tracing it I'm stopping when I come to any lines I've made underneath so that that square looks like it's sitting behind the other shapes. Now I'll use my ruler to create some rectangles. In this section, I'm going to add some circles.
and make each alternate one a little bit different. I suppose it's a little bit like the pattern Saluna by Peggy Shargle. The only difference is I'm just drawing the circles in a strip instead of having them overlapping. This next pattern is E-Mingler or Ambler. Both of these are by Zentangle and they have this same maze-like pattern in them. The difference is one's done on a grid and the other is done in a strip. But it's using this same go round and round in a square kind of fashion like a maze. Now I'll add some triangles so it looks a little bit like a zigzag. Using a pencil, divide the square up into quarters and then eighths, or at least the best you can without worrying about all the obstacles that are in the way. This next pattern is called Palrivo by Kerry Hewn. This pattern gets a little bit tricky because we're navigating all these other shapes. So it might help to draw it first on a piece of paper so you can copy what's happening within each square. Whoops. See, I should have taken my own advice. A little bit of white gel pen will fix that up. There are no mistakes in Zentangle. And once we start colouring, you won't even see that. I must be having a bad day. I did this perfectly the first time and then realised I wasn't actually filming. I was filming the bits in between what I thought I was filming. Never mind. <laughs> If you're getting confused about the direction of these lines, here's what they look like. And alternatively, you can colour parts of them in or add extra lines. Now I'll fill in the background with some diagonal lines.
Whoops again. Thank goodness for white jelly roll pens. Even though today I'm demonstrating how to use alcohol markers, I know they're expensive, so use whatever you've got. Coloured pencils, watercolour pencils, doesn't really matter. If you hold down the pen on your paper, you'll see how much it bleeds. Now I'm just showing you how to blend these markers. Put one on top of the other and then just work the lighter one back into the darker one. So you can see the gradation of colours with the three primary colours. And we have the added benefit by using primary colours we can then mix them. So yellow and blue make green and you can vary the shade by adding more yellow or adding more blue. Then of course you can do the same thing with the darker version. Or you can even make another shade using a light pen of one colour and a darker pen of the other colour. So of course red and blue make purple and yellow and red make orange. Before I begin I'm just going to erase the pencil lines. This is handy also if you're using watercolours because once you lay down the colour that pencil line is set there.
If you find your pens are getting a little bit dirty, just clean them off with a spare scrap of paper. You can see here I've added some extra black lines and now I'm going to use one of my grey markers and I've chosen the N4 to do some shading. This is the finished tile and here are some other variations. Of course you can always use different materials, different surfaces and even different colour palettes. If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do that, that way you don't miss out on future videos. I'd love it if you could join us with the Facebook group. Click on that link below this video and you can share your work. So until next week, stay safe and bye for now. To watch more of my videos, you can click on the links on the screen and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.